It's been a crazy last day and a half in the Call of Duty world. If you followed along at all, whether that be on Twitter, YouTube, Reddit, wherever it is, it's been a wild ride. And why I say this is because apparently a former employee of Treyarch dropped some bombshells on users over on Reddit the other day, and as a result, well, it's just been an insane ride. Initially, I wasn't sure if I wanted to discuss some of the stuff here because it relates to a lot of zombie stuff and some things coming out in the future, but it's also because I wasn't entirely sure how credible it really was. The story behind this whole situation, this whole brouhaha, was that a QA tester at Treyarch apparently got fired. For those that are unaware, QA testers are those guys whose job it is to play the game, test it out for hours on end, and in this case, for Easter eggs and other core components to make sure that the game works. Simply put, they're the guys that play, make sure no bugs are found in the build, or make sure that as little as possible make it to the live field, then rinse and repeat. But from his story, apparently he was fired over the timing of a break, and apparently then things got really ugly, so then he took to Reddit. Many may say bless him for the leaks we'll talk about here in this video a little bit, and the information that he's given, but honestly man, I do not envy the position this guy is in as a result. According to his post before they were eventually deleted, he had a fat lawsuit coming towards him from Activision, which honestly, when you spill the beans on that much what is at this point considered intellectual property, you're going to have a bad time. Like, a really bad time. But that said, we've seen 4chan leaks, we've seen Reddit posts, and we've seen things that turn out to be nothing. But lo and behold, if you're sub to any zombies guys on YouTube, yesterday there was a, shall we say, interesting number of small easter eggs that were conveniently discovered with tutorials and all. Suspicious timing, no? But seriously, it seemed like from the info that was tossed out, it was completely credible by those finds. So I want to talk to you guys a little bit about today, those things and what I found interesting out of all of it, some relating to the game as a whole, some relating to zombies, some DLC talk, and more. Backstory out of the way, let's talk about what's actually on hand here. One of the first big things that was listed out of this leak was that Nuketown Zombies is apparently going to be happening 100%, but there's no date given on when that'll actually release. While it's not, as you'll see by the rest of the video, referenced as a DLC map, it might actually become a free map as a result, something that happens 100% just given to all players, like what we're going to be seeing with Nuketown here as of this weekend. Interestingly enough, perhaps even, but probably not, a part of that Nuketown release this week. I think that'd be really cool that we end up seeing Nuketown drop for multiplayer on PlayStation 4 and maybe have it drop for zombies as well at the same exact time in conjunction and then of course a week later for Xbox One and PC, but honestly I think that'd be really cool, but I think if it's not tethered to this, it's going to follow the same pattern where it's a free map granted to everybody and it's not a part of those DLC maps, if you will, from the Black Ops Pass and what will be eventually released in the future for separate DLC purchase. That's something that was mentioned and again seemingly it doesn't seem to reference being tethered in with that, but interesting that Nuketown Zombies is going to be happening again. I know it's not personally on my favorite list of Zombies maps, but it is something that was available within Black Ops 2, and if it's free, why not? Let's talk about DLC though in the future, because this was an interesting part that was brought up as well from this employee's Reddit post. They talked about DLC packs. Now, what we have right now kind of contradicts that, but hearing it from somebody that is on the inside, that's interesting that that term was used. The Black Ops Pass and Supply Stream seem to shy away from what that pack normally means, and it's weird to hear that when we were led to believe we don't have sectioned off DLC packs every couple of months, that we'd end up hearing that. We see that Nuketown is coming later this week, and we see that we have Specialist DLC coming next month, but outside of that, it's really kind of unsure, and it's still kind of a mystery as to how the format will be kept. So maybe this is a complete curveball. Maybe we will get, of course, free DLC continuously throughout the year, where we have a map, say, given to us every two to three months, or a new Specialist every two to three months as well, as sort of a top-down offering for all players, no matter what, for free, but maybe those actually do still tether in every so often DLC DLC packs. But apparently, according to this, DLC packs will have one zombies map per pack. So maybe it's just a knee jerk reaction and something that's so muscle memory to say DLC pack, that's what's referenced. But I don't know, man, that's an interesting way to look at this. But according to his post a little further, apparently DLC 1 for zombies is actually going to be a prequel to the chaos story with new characters, four of them. So no crossover, no bleed over. So maybe Rip, Diego, Scarlet, Sean, Bruno already. Maybe they're a one off type of deal. Maybe we don't see them at all. But that just seems really interesting to me why they'd be introduced and kind of left out to dry. So maybe we'll see them return in the future as well. But again, interesting, this whole DLC ideology currently. But outside of that, talking zombies a little bit further, we end up seeing that he also mentioned that a 4v4 grief mode was actually planned, but could be cancelled at any time. And this 
for Zombies players is something that's honestly a classic. Black Ops 2 introduced things like grief and we also saw cut game modes like Chase the Meat and some other things that would have been really cool and it seems like Black Ops 4 may take this a step further with grief coming back in a 4v4 manner but hopefully it's not canceled. And if it's not, I'm curious to see if we'll see limited time modes or game modes introduced to zombies like Chase the Meat, perhaps, in which that's something that later on down the line, we have surprise DLC in a sense for that. I think that'd be really cool to end up seeing, but that's something that was apparently planned. Apparently also for zombies, the classic perks may return, one of which what was detailed was Speed Cola coming back in the next title update, which presumably is going to be Tuesday. Apparently that's gonna be a bonus in-game vapor for free for everybody, and you'll be able to use it anytime. So that'll be something very cool, and of course we'll be able to check the validity of that if given Tuesday's update, we get one or not, but we'll see in time. Also, Jug may return, but it was initially removed. This whole situation with zombies, if you guys follow that at all, Jug was removed and it kind of initially made a little bit of an uproar, but apparently it was just due to issues with the armor and the health system. They couldn't get it to work out well, so they just were like, let's take out Jug. But that may be a case of a perk returning at a future point, but his leak didn't detail any time frame or estimate for when to expect it. So that's something you can maybe keep in the back of your mind, but right now, don't get your hopes up too much. The final thing for zombies, and I promised this for you guys that may not be too into zombies, is that he detailed a little bit of an Easter egg that was actually taken out of Nine, which honestly I would have loved to see. That being something in which you could interact with the raw statue, and then it would make the crowd of Nine actually do the wave. Now. As for why it was removed, who knows, but I think that'd be some comical relief here and just a funny little Easter egg to have, but no more. The final thing we'll talk about is honestly probably the biggest tier of this, or at least in my books it is, because I absolutely love the entire concept of what we're talking about with this, that being a campaign for Call of Duty Black Ops 4. Now, as we saw by reports pre-release and just after the worldwide reveal of Black Ops 4, it was something that we heard there were plans for Black Ops 4's campaign, but it was cut because of whatever reason you want to throw out there. There's multiple reports. I don't know if we'll ever get a straight answer here on this, except for maybe a little bit of an indication as to what this guy ended up stating. As per his Reddit post, he ended up saying that the Black Ops 4 campaign was worked on until mid-2017, but was scrapped due to wanting to make too many multiplayer maps, and that it was designed to be a 2v2 co-op race to finish each mission. Now, we're going to break apart each part of this because there's a lot that can really be said about all of this. Firstly, mid-2017, that actually makes sense. That falls in line because that's when Blackout was reportedly from, again, internal reports, supposedly started in its development. Blackout was not something that from the very get-go was something included within the base plans for Black Ops 4. And whether or not you want to say it was something to make up for a campaign or if it was something that they just decided, you know what, let's do this, let's give it a go. It's a trendy thing right now within the industry. We don't exactly know. Of course, you could probably interpret that however you want, but for the sake of timeline, it does match up in which Black Ops 4 apparently was done with development on a campaign. The second part of this that I want to dissect and that really actually kind of bothers me is the fact they said they wanted to focus on too many multiplayer maps. Now, I'm going to take this firstly with a little bit of skepticism and maybe trying to play devil's advocate here with this because right now we do know that we do have a lot of content coming out throughout the year. We already have a lot on the table planned with Nuketown coming out this week, new specialists all throughout the year. And then of course, whatever may be thrown intermittently as well within events and other content like that, plus the DLC maps that you can actually pay for. So maybe there are more that are coming later on down the line that will see a free map every single month or something like that, to which this makes sense. That statement makes sense in which which there's air quote too many multiplayer maps but right now I don't think the game shipped with all that many maps I mean a third of them as is are remakes from games of Black Ops 1 or Black Ops 2 and so realistically 9 to 10 maps that are brand new I wouldn't necessarily call that too many maps and have that completely take away from development now I'm no game engineer I'm no developer so I really couldn't give you a first-hand account of what it actually takes, but that to me just seems a little fishy, especially considering you have games in the past or what people would consider the golden era of COD that launched with 16, 17, 18 maps. What we have now by those standards isn't really a lot, so I don't know how much I buy into this too many MP maps. But the final thing that I want to talk about here out of this and finally break down is that there was apparently a design intent to make it a 2v2 co-op race to finish each mission. And that's one thing that if this was going to be the sole intent of the campaign, 
Personally, I don't know if I mind it being removed at this point because when I sit and think about a campaign within the Black Ops universe, I think about a story and a rich narrative that's gonna keep me immersed and really mess with my mind a little bit. That's what World at War, Black Ops, Black Ops 2 did fantastically. But with Black Ops 3, the real focus on a more co-op sequence was something I wasn't entirely too fond of. I know that, of course, played still just as well in a solo mannerism. When I think about a campaign, I think about a story that I wanna play and be a part of but I don't necessarily need to think the integral part and the core components of that really are me racing a friend to complete it. I wanna be involved, immersed in the story and feel like I'm there. So if that was the sole intent and it was something that actually would take away from some of the solo play of it, maybe I'm the crazy one, but I don't know if I necessarily missed that idea then. I think that I might be okay letting this one wash away. You may have a completely different opinion and that is 1000% fine. I totally respect that. But to me, I like to think of a more so immersive campaign, not necessarily a race to finish it. But that said, that's what was detailed here out of this leak from a supposed QA tester that was fired. And now again, probably has a massive lawsuit on his hand that might ruin his life for the foreseeable future. I can't imagine that he's gonna be getting anything in this industry anytime soon. So from just the personal aspect of it, this story is actually horrible to watch from the end, but from an information perspective, it offers a rare glimpse into the inside of Call of Duty. And so it's interesting to take a look at all this kind of stuff, what may be planned, what may actually happen, what may not, but for now, that's all there is to it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Is there anything in particular you guys really thought was interesting here out of this? Are you guys looking forward to seeing anything that was mentioned come to fruition? Are you guys upset that campaign was cut to focus on air quote more multiplayer maps? Whatever it is, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. But of course, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like down below. If you're also new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Black Ops 4, multiplayer, blackout, zombies. Whatever it is, we got you covered here on the channel with the best of updates, news, information, tips, tricks, best class setups, all that good stuff. We got you covered. So any of that interests you, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. If you guys also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best places to get connected outside of YouTube. Practically live on both those. So if you guys want to check those out, links in the description below. But all that said, now that we hope you guys have a fantastic day. Thanks so much for watching. Mine's the best espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.